Happy Sabbath. Happy day. God is good, church. All the time. It's a privilege once again to stand before you to share God's word. And we want to believe as, uh, as Paul writes it that there is uh, everything that happens, whether bad or good, it's to the glory of God. So initially we expected Pastor Sisa Marika to be here, but as, you, as my brother has alluded, he is out of the country, so he could not make it to this place. But nevertheless, we are here to share God's word, and I apologize for, for failing you. Expectations were high for having a, a different voice and face to stand before us this day, but please, uh, we can now lower expectation and now uh, get to listen from God. Amen? Yeah, I received greetings from many people. Actually, many associates reached out to me and they said, pass my regards. Many of them, I cannot mention the names, uh, including our chair person. God is good all the time. Let's, let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, Lord in Jesus' name, it's yet another time, Lord, we come before you asking that you may lead us in this session, Lord. Pray that your spirit may guide us, may teach us, and may you down, come down and tabernacle with us, Lord, even of these uh, minutes that we are going to share your word. May honor and glory be unto you. This is our prayer by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Many years ago, our elder brother was communing with our father, and He had this prayer to his, uh, to the father, and I hope you can, your guess is good as mine. You are leading the lectury where I'm going to. Our elder brother was communing with our father, and he had a very special prayer to his uh, disciples, and also them who will come after the disciples. Come with me to the book of John, chapter 17. Christ was communing with the Father. This is one of the wrongest prayer recorded in the, in, the, in, the, in the Bible, where Christ pleaded with the Father for this one thing. And we're reading from verse, verse 9. It's a wrong prayer that uh, our, our elder brother uttered. And he's saying in verse 9, I pray for them. Who could be this for them? Are we together? In this verse, them, whom is them referring to? Please be here. I want us to listen together. I pray for them. Who could be Christ praying for? These them, the disciples, right? Yeah, thank you. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Why? But for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And he continues, and all mine are thine. And thine are mine. And I am glorified in them. He continues to say, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. While this, yes, disciples, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me. Did you meet the last phrase? that they may be one as we are. This was the desire that Christ had to his disciples before he left. He's saying, he's saying and, and now I am no more in the world, but this, this 
are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. We know the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are one. And this is the desire that Christ had for his disciples, that they may be one. For if they were, being, they, they were to be, or rather they, be, they were to be one, then great things could proceed. Or rather, great things could have happened. That was the greatest desire. Because when they were to be in one, they were in one mind. They have the same vision. They have the same purpose. They have the same, like, the goal was to spread the word. And Christ longed that his disciples may be one. But he never left that prayer at that point. You will allow me to jump some verses and come with me to verse 20 now. It says, Neither pray I for this alone, but for them. This them in this verse 20 it is first to who? Okay, let me read it. It says, Neither pray I for this alone. This we have established. He was, he was praying to his disciples, right? Yes. And, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word. So, this, or rather the them in verse 20, is referring to them who will believe on him through their word. Continues to say, verse 21, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may... There is something special here for us to get uh, that first collectively. It says, verse 21, that they all may be one. This is the desire that Christ had for the disciples who will come after. This prayer, he was uttering the prayer to his disciples. And for them, me and you, who have believed this word, me and you, who have this faith, who have believed in the word, that he says, but for them also, we shall believe on me through their word. That they all may be one. This was the greatest desire of Christ. And it has huge as this inspired song, um, it should be song 612. If I'm not, uh, let, me, let me check. There are great things that will happen when his disciples and them who will believe the word will be one. First, two says, like a mighty army moves the church of God. Brothers, me and you, we are treading where the saints have trod. That's song 612, verse, uh, verse 2. It says, we are not divided. All one body we. Sorry? We are not divided. All one body we. Now, listen to the last few statements in, in, that, in that verse. One in hope. One in doctrine. One in charity. And these are the things that Paul was expressing in his letters. In many of his letters, he's saying about charity, he's saying about hope, he's saying about faith. And this is, for us to be one, these are the things we need to maintain. The writer says, one in hope. For when we have the same hope, we'll be one, we'll be having our one purpose. Our, our goal will be defined by our hope. Like now, me and you, we are one. We are looking for the blessed hope of the appearing of the Son, Jesus Christ. As we read from the book of, uh, should be Titus. The blessed hope. One in hope and doctrine. The Bible says in, jo in John 7, verse, verse 17. Maybe you can, get, you can get there, John 7, verse 17. 
The Bible says in John 7 verse 17, um, If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine. Many of us we 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 get con we we get divided on 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 things that should not be divided. Honestly, there are some things that has been overemphasized and has made the church to be divided. One in doctrine, even man will do his will. So it could be we are not coming into, in, into, into harmony with the doctrines of, or rather the doctrines that me and you believe. It could be we are not doing God's will. Maybe you are studying the Bible to, uh, to justify something that you know, not to be convicted and for that truth that you want to study. Maybe you, you, you just want to show off how much you know about that thing and, 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 and get into discussion, into, in, into um, um, discuss, discussing to see who wins or who loses. Could it be the reason why we are not, uh, we are not united in this doctrine? Could it, could it be that we are not doing God's will, that we are not becoming one in doctrine? We are divided on, 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 on the doctrines we believe in. Could it be that we are not studying and we are not studying the uh, God's word and when one stands to share something you will not be united with him or her because simply because you don't know. We need to study for ourselves. The spirit will teach us. The songwriter says we are not divided. All one body we one in hope and doctrine, one in charity. I'll come back to that uh, statement uh, later on. I was impressed by verse 21, what it says that they, that's verse, uh, verse 21 of John 17, that they all may be one. So this was the, 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 the prayer that Christ had for, his, uh, for the disciples who will come after. Those whom that we believe his word, neither pray I, neither pray I for this alone, but them, me and you, who we believe on his word. That they all may be one. This is the desire that Christ had. And it is it is very evident you can you can see um what brought this harmony, this Unity in the heavenly places. You know what? It was selfishness of that man, that mighty angel who was. It was selfishness that brought this harmony and this unity. And it was something uh, humiliating to our father. Throwing down his angels. It was not an easy thing. And whatever brought that, it was selfishness in, 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 in the heart of one man. The reason why we are not, uh, or rather we are not united, that nature of selfishness has not been dealt away with in our lives. So we do not esteem others better than ourselves. And if that is in us, then we will strive for unity and will not uh, uh, get, uh, get rid of selfishness. That's why Christ is saying that they all may be one as thou father art in me. Now listen, and be one in us. Sorry. Um, let me repeat it first, 21. That they all may be one, 
as thou father art in me and I in thee that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me you see when we are divided we cannot move in a united front and and people will say many things about a, a divided people you see it's the scheme of satan to divide and rule but it is the it's the purpose of god to unite and move as a mighty army as he says in this verse too that like a mighty army moves the church of god a mighty army brothers when we are united when we are not divided all of us one in hope one in charity one in doctrine great things will happen Verse 23 says, most importantly, I in them. You see, that is the gist of everything. Christ is saying, and I in them. I, Christ is saying, I in them. You see, when Christ is in us, automatically the selfish nature will be dealt away with. We'll esteem others better than ourselves. We'll learn to love and cherish all the members that we come across to. One in charity. You see, charity, as Paul uh, gets to explain it in a whole chapter, explaining that we can do all these things but without charity, then it's null and void. I can be a good speaker, but without love, it's null and void. And it's, it's evident as we come to the close, or rather as we, we see uh, things coming to a close, um, for we are living at the blink of eternity. And soon our master is appearing, and he, and he had prophesied this and saying that the love of many will grow cold the love of many will grow cold. Until him he is in us, we'll never experience unity. Until him he is in us, as he's saying in verse 23, I in them. This was the prayer, the desire that Christ had. And this day I'm coming here to share to us that this is the experience we need, brothers and sisters, that I in them and thou in me, that they may, they, may, they may be made perfect in one. So, for us ultimately to get there, perfect in one, I in them. Could it be we have not welcomed Christ fully in our hearts. Could it be that we have not surrendered ourselves to allow God to use us? Could it be that we have not given our life to God and we have not surrendered fully to him and allow him to work in us to esteem each rather our brothers better than ourselves to look not on ourselves but for them could it be that we have not surrendered ourselves? Could it be in church? You see, this is a university set up church. And many things divide, divide uh, the churches. But honestly, how can a university set up church? People, with, people who can uh, study for the cut, uh, even 10 minutes to, and produce it exactly as it is. How, honestly, a university church that we want to be divided on politics in church, honestly, how leaders do we? Few things that divide the church. You see, we give the leaders 
hard time. The leaders of the church, they find hard time to plan and execute events in the church. Why? We are not united. We cannot support church events. It's because of politics, because somebody said something bad about you. It's until that selfish nature has died, will we be, will we be united. And my plea to us this day is to realize why there is no unity in church. People, or rather church members, let me not use people, church members, most of us would not esteem others better than ourselves. The selfish nature has not been yet uh, buried. But we give the leadership hard time to, uh, to lead and execute events in church because we can't support. We are pulling. You see, if you are not gathering with Christ, then you are scattering. And that's not the attribute of a Christian. Why should you scatter? For it is the, it's the work of Satan to scatter, to divide and rule. Could you be an agent no, unknowingly? It's time to ask God that he may lead you, that you may accept him, that he may dwell in you. But this will be your experience. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. So that the experience of Moses may not be the experience to one in hope and doctrine. Our theme was defined by unity of purpose. And the psalmist says, as we get the book of Psalms, Psalms, the text that we read, Psalms chapter 133, uh, verse 1, it says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. You can meditate upon that verse over and over again. And when you get back to it, and you, you, you get another, uh, another view of, of, of that verse. Now lead with me. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. How pleasant, how good. David Kali is on to say, it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. Why could he why could David equate the the pleasant, the goodness, the pleasures? Rather, why is he equating the unity? The pleasant that he's saying with the precious ointment. You see, when, uh, when we lead uh, the, the ointment that the priests were anointed with, with the things that it was made of, if we could give it some uh, summation, maybe we can lead and you can give a summation by, by yourself. Let's get the book of Exodus. We want to read the book of Exodus. What is this pleasures? What could be this anointing oil? Exodus chapter 30. Exodus chapter 30, and we are reading from verse 22. Moreover, the Lord's Speak. Maybe I, I can hear people flipping their pages. I can allow you to get there. Thank you. It says, verse 22, Moreover, 
the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take thou also unto thee principal spices of pure our English fellows in the room. We need that for, uh, the pronunciation of the next word. That one. 500 shekels and of sweet cinnamon have so much. Even 250 shekels and of sweet calmers 250 shekels and of are we together? I'm in verse 24. And of yeah, 500 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary and of olive, oil, olive, and hin. Very big words there, but you can, can search. You have time to explain all those things. You can get time and go through those. And thou shalt make it an oil. You see the ingredients. If you could be in the industry of producing perfumes, which I, I know many of us don't use, but um, those of us who use, you know the cost of those things, right? Any, okay, to me, Rakini, Najua cost ya ke si pesa kidogo. Ya si re ya kupimiwa. I'm speaking about perfumes. And, 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 and thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound after the art of the hey, apo, apotecali. I don't know if that's the right pronunciation. It shall be an holy anointing oil. And thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation therewith and the ark of the testimony. And the table and all his vessels and the candlestick and his vessels and the altar of incense can lead uh, down through there where uh, Moses is being instructed. Um, the ingredients, the quantities, if you could quantify how it could be that expensive. But the David is equating to this how good and pleasant it's like quite interesting here. I'll give you time to go and, uh, and, 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 and get the divinations of those huge words there and, and, and find their, their elephants. But it's like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard that the, the priests were anointed with. You see, as I said earlier on, all of us have been given our purpose. Or rather, me and you have found ourselves in church for our purpose. And most important of that is to unite people. And when we are united, as a mighty arm, as we have read in that verse of, uh, of, 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 of song 612, like a mighty army moves the church of God. Brothers, we are treading where the saints have trod. You see, until the disciples were one, then they received the Holy Spirit. And what me and you, we are praying for the latter lane until we are one. That will not be our experience. Until the disciples were in one accord, then they received the Holy Spirit. And they did tremendous work. Until they were one. And this is, this is the desire of Christ. Sometimes, you see, when you esteem others better than yourself, there are some things that will... And one thing I find so interesting that uh, makes us not, not to be united. It's becoming very hard for us to forgive one another. Somebody longed you and they did something weird to you and, and you have found it hard in your heart to forgive that person. Somebody pronounced something about you and you were offended and, and, and you have found it hard 
to forgive that person. At no point will you be united. And that's why we need to realize the power of forgiveness in our goal to be united. And this is, you see even in the prayer that Christ gave, the Lord's prayer, may you forg uh, forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. There is power, there is healing power in forgiveness. I, and I suppose you have read that book. For if we find it hard to forgive, because in a setup like ours, somebody will say something that will, will offend you, and you will feel offended, and you, you will ultimately make a pledge not to forgive that person, and at no point will you be united. And that's not the will of God. The will of God is that we may be one. That was the desire. That was the prayer. The longest prayer that Christ uttered for his disciples and them who will come after him. That was the prayer of Christ. Until we are one. Brothers and sisters, I know it's very hard to forgive someone who has wronged you. But it's not in your power to forgive. Until the first 23 we led, I in them, when Christ is in us, will find it easy to forgive. It is the hardest thing outside there. People say, I'll forgive, but I'll not forget. But Christ wants us to forgive. If we say he forgives our sins, and he throws, just imagine throwing a stone in the sea, that Christ forgets our sins, that much, and me and you cannot forgive our brother or sister, and that creates an enmity, we are not united, no brothers and sisters. We must learn to forgive and forget. And that's not in our power. For the Bible says, it's not by power or by might, but by the spirit, as Zachariah puts it. Even Paul, in, his, in one of his letters, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Until Christ is in us, brothers and sisters, we will not achieve unity. And my plea this morning, or rather this afternoon, to us as associates, to us as continuing students, may we allow Christ to dwell in us, that we may experience the power of forgiveness, that we may esteem others better than ourselves, that we may learn from him who is meek, humble, and who loved everyone, no matter how he was or she was, no matter the sins that he done or she did, Christ wants us that to be our experience. It is, it is his desire that we be in one in hope. We must have a common hope and we must be united in that. You see, Paul says, now these things remain it, faith, hope, and charity. Even for no time to explain about charity in one of his letters in Corinthian statements in Corinthians, that now remain at these things, brethren, faith, charity, and, 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 and hope. May we be united in one doctrine, in charity. For if, we, if this be our experience, as a mighty army, the church of God will be. May God help us. May we surrender ourselves to him and allow him to use us so that whatever purpose the church has, whatever purpose as an alumni team has, then we'll join hands, we'll find it easy to be united, we'll, 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 we'll cooper, we will ourselves cooperate and, and do mighty things. And at the end of it all, the name of God will be glorified. May God bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us stand with the song 350 as we come to a close. That's by softly we sing. Let's be
Thank you so much uh, for that song, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds Our Hearts in Christian Love. The fellowship of kindred minds is like that above. We share each other's woes, our mutual burdens bear, and often for each other's flow, the sympathizing tear. You see, it pains when we stand apart, but we shall still be joined in heart and hope to meet again. Let's pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, Lord, in Jesus' name, we praise your name. We glorify your name, Lord. Thank you so much for being a faithful Father. Thank you so much for you have led us in this uh, session. Lord, we pray that the, the prayer that you, you pray to your disciples and us, Lord, may it be our experience also, Lord. May we learn to teach us, Lord, and to surrender ourselves to you, that we allow you to dwell in us, that, Lord, we may esteem others better than ourselves, that we may learn to live in harmony and peace and even experience the unity that you desire us to have. Lord, we pray that you may give us strength even to forgive those who, of us who has uh, longed us, Lord, and give them grace to accept our, of our, our, our forgiveness, Lord. Lord, we pray that even the remaining part of this day, you may guide us in a special way. We pray that uh, your will may be done upon our lives now and forevermore a prayer by faith in Jesus name Amen God bless you I, my name is Mohamed Mboy Christ of 2021 20, Ministers of Hope God bless you so much we praise